June. Yes, NES Godzilla? The time has come. The time has come? The time has come. The time has come? The time has come. The time has come. Or... Look at the table, you idiot. Hey there everybody, here's Eugene Morris again with the Brotherhood of Gaming with another Godzilla review. Now, this Godzilla game is not from my childhood, but you know what, screw it. Once I heard about this game, I had to seek it out and try it. And give you my thoughts on it. Here is Godzilla Domination for the Game Boy Advance. Godzilla Domination was a 2002 game released exclusively on the Game Boy Advance. It was developed by WayForward Technologies. Oh snap, one of my favorite developers made a Godzilla game? You had me at hello. So this game has a story mode, custom mode, versus mode, and options. Let's first take a look at the story. So in some unspecified future, a meteor appears over Tokyo 2 and starts raining magnetic waves around the Earth. This causes monsters all over the world to go crazy, all except your chosen monster. Here you have to fight your way through eight levels on Earth and its neighboring planets and fight waves of monsters. So this is essentially a fighting game with a bit of a top-down angle. You go into battle with your selected beast and face off on one-on-one -on -one fights, tag team, free-for-all, or one-on-three -on -three where everyone is against you. Now the real fun part in these areas is that there's so much stuff to destroy, such as buildings. Speaking of which, you can also pick them up and throw them at your opponents. When you smash through them, you will unveil power-ups. Now, some of them have positive effects, while others have negative ones. For example, some can give you a speed burst, which is always fun to see, while others actually can invert your controls for a bit or slow you down. You have two basic attacks. Now, for example, if you're playing as Godzilla, you have a punch and a tail whip. You have the option to hold down these attack buttons to cause your monster to glow. When he starts flashing, you can do a super attack like a bite or a stomp. A block and jump attack is included as well, along with throw moves. In the midst of combat, you can stun or get stunned that can leave monsters open for attack. One criticism is that sometimes you can end up stun locking your opponents when they are caught up at the end of the screen. It's not that big of a deal, but it is there. There are two power bars for you to monitor. One is a health bar, while the other is an energy bar. The energy power fills up when you destroy cities, get energy blocks, or land super attacks. When this bar is filled up all the way, you can unleash even stronger attacks. There are three in total, and again going back to Godzilla, a good example is that he can use his atomic breath or do a health regeneration. One unfortunate limitation with the system is in order to access these superpowers you have to hit two buttons at once. And I mean, they both have to be connected at the same time which can be a little frustrating. The game gives you six monsters to play as, which includes Godzilla, naturally, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Megalon, Rodan, and Mechagodzilla 2. The roster is a bit light. Angaris and Gigan were supposed to be in this game too, but they were scrapped late in the process. This is unfortunate because they really would have been fun to play as. Each monster possesses their own strengths and weaknesses, and they all look great while they're doing their thing. The character models for these games are really well done. They have a more cartoony look, but it really works well for this display. Yeesh, Megalon's been hitting the gym. The story has eight levels to play through, including two bonus levels which allows you to destroy UFOs and attack jets for extra points. The final boss turns out to be Mecha King Ghidorah, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But apparently the original final boss was supposed to be Biolante, which would have been awesome! And that does explain why Mecha King Ghidorah is so much bigger than all the other monsters. Anyway, he can be a bit annoying to beat, 
The pattern is that you have to jump and attack the heads to stun him, and then hit that red button. Once all his heads are destroyed, the enemy is defeated and you win the day. The custom mode in this game is pretty much battle mode without the story. You could choose your monster, your opponents, how many you want them to be, and your stages. The game also features a two player mode, so let's check that out. Oh right, I forgot. Uh, can't show you two player because I have no friends. Another element that's worth noting is the music in this game. When playing it, I was wondering, why is it so damn good? Answer, Jake Kaufman. Yep, the same guy who did the music for Shantae, DuckTales Remastered, and Shovel Knight did the music for this game. No wonder then. Now while Godzilla Domination was not a game changer or anything like that, it was still a good, solid Godzilla game. Godzilla games seem to generally work better as fighting games, even though I think a Streets of Rage style beat-em-up would still be pretty fun. But this one does it right, with fun areas to fight through, great looking characters and responsive controls. The action is done well and it's addicting. It was also a nice touch to see that each stage has their own personalities. For example, on snow levels, the ground's a bit slippery, and when you're on an asteroid, you can float for a bit. Overall, I personally feel that this game is a real hidden gem in the Godzilla gaming lore, and it's perfect for handheld devices. If there is any way you can search this out, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're a Godzilla fan. It's simple, but effective. Well, there you have it. There's my review of Godzilla Domination for the Game Boy Advance. Well, let me know what you guys think. Make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Eugene Morris, again, for the Brotherhood of Gaming. We'll see you next time. Take care, and remember, keep on gaming. Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit-chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.